Welcome to the Gage and James Progress video, a build log detailing a replica of the Pentacott and Payne model used on the television series. Gage One James is based off the Season 1 through Season 5 model. After Season 5, a different casting replaced the original. Gage One James began on August 14, 2008. At that time, it was cut out of polystyrene sheets and glued together into a rough form of the locomotive. Almost immediately after, a PVC pipe was procured and fitted for the boiler. Wheel splashers came next, first on the left side, then on the right. Though I've yet to decide whether one will be fitted or not, I drilled a boiler in advance for a smoke unit. This photo shows how the foot plate was cut before it was ever fitted to provide clearance for the chassis. By August 25th, James really starts to take shape. At this point, I scratch built the chassis for the model around a highly modified Aristocraft Rogers drive. Little was left of the original drive except a gearing arrangement and a motor. It didn't take long before James's shell was rolling down the tracks under its own power over its own chassis. Shortly thereafter, power pickups were added for track power. Bodywork then commenced, starting with Bondo to smooth out the edges and seams. Squadron putty was used for some of the more delicate work. After sanding, the body was treated to a coat of primer and, you guessed it, red paint. The smoke box was painted black, automotive pinstripes were added, and a clear coat was applied. Now that Jane's paint job was partially finished, it's time to work on the animatronic system. Replicating the original Pentacop paint models, a Futaba receiver was installed in the model along with micro servos. The micro servos are designed to operate the eyes up, down, forward, and backwards. A classic Futaba attack control adds to the nostalgia. Now there's no point in having James without his tender, so that was the next step. A tender shell was built along with its chassis, its height was test fitted, and the two sections put together. A while went by and Bachmann began to offer its own oversized version of the Thomas models, which supplied a convenient source for the buffers. These buffers were converted to gauge one, as shown here. A file was used to gradually reduce the size of the buffer, and sandpaper was used to smooth out the file marks. I consulted screenshots of pre-season 6 episodes to estimate the size of the buffers. The first buffer served as a guide for the second. The buffers were then repainted Ford Red, masked off, and then painted flat black. Holes were then drilled in James' buffer beam, the buffers were slid in and then glued down with Permatex epoxy. Stay tuned for the next progress video, where we install the drawbar, buffer beam, and paint the tender on James. See you then.